Okay, to start class, you're gonna do this warm up. Uh, it's not in your packet, you need to write it. Uh, page 74 is a good place. We will pause the video here and give you about three minutes to do number one, watch the solution, and then we'll give you a few more minutes to do number two. Okay, so for number one, the fact that we're given that f of one equals zero means that one is a zero. which then means that x minus one is a factor. So we can use that um, to divide the factor of x minus one out of that polynomial to then get the um, polynomial of x in complete factored form. So I'm gonna do box method for my factor, I mean for my dividing, excuse me, and I'm going to put the factor of x minus 1 down here on the left. I'm going to take our um, polynomial from the equation and put that on the diagonals. And now we can fill in the rest of our box by dividing. So I'm gonna take the x to the fourth and put it in my box, and then think x to the fourth divided by x gives me x to the third. Then with multiplication, I can fill in this bottom box and subtract backwards. So that's x to the third minus negative x to the third which is 2x to the third. And now 2x to the third divided by x is 2x squared. You can multiply that into this bottom box. And we're going to subtract negative 6x squared minus negative 2x squared is negative 4x squared divide, negative 4x squared divided by x is negative 4x, multiply, subtract, negative 4x minus 4x is the negative 8x, negative 8x divided by 8 is negative 8, Negative 8 times negative 1 is 8. And then when we subtract, we should get a remainder of 0 because it's a factor. It should divide evenly. So now, for f of x, we have that x minus 1 is a factor. And the remaining factor is x to the third plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 8. We have to factor completely. Let me get myself some more space here. And we can factor the remaining um, polynomial by grouping. So I can take out an x squared and a negative 4. Regroup. But I'm not done factoring yet. The difference of two squares. So to factor completely, we have x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2, and then the x plus 2. I'm going to rewrite that with this x plus 2 and x plus 2 as x plus 2 squared. Since I have to graph and I need that multiplicity of two to help me graph. So part B says state the zeros. So the zeros are one, negative two, and two. So to sketch my graph, negative two, one, and two. 
Because it's an even degree with a positive leading coefficient, my end behaviors are both going to be towards infinity. So connecting uh, my zeros, considering my multiplicity, this is what your graph should look like. Okay. Now give you a chance to try number two. Pause the video and do that one. And your answer for number two should be as you have here on the screen in red. If this, still is, if this is still challenging for you, make sure you make a point to come in for lunch for help. Focus is going to be on modeling a real world situation using a polynomial function. So instead of doing this in groups, we're all gonna do the same piece of paper um, to make a box. So we're gonna, we're gonna all work on the same problem. So we wanna create, create a box from a piece of paper. And then we're gonna record the measurements and find the volume. So if we have a piece of computer paper that's 28 centimeters by 21 and a half centimeters, and we're gonna cut out five centimeter corners from each side. So if we visualize this, here is your piece of paper. We've got one side that's 21 and a half centimeters and the other side is 28. We are gonna cut out a square corner from each that is five centimeters by five centimeters. So we're gonna pause the video here and fill in the length, the width, and the height of what this box would look like. Okay, so for your length, um, whether you did the 28 or 21 and a half, um, I'll start with the 28. I'm taking out five two times. So 28 minus five minus five is 18. The same thing with the other side here and here is 21 and a half minus five minus five, and that leaves us with 11.5. And if I take this piece of paper and I fold it up to be three dimensional, what's gonna happen is this cutout of five is gonna be the height of the box. And I found a picture online so I can show you what that would look like. So if you visualize your paper, here's the corners we're cutting out and they're doing, they're showing different um, lengths of the corner cutouts. It's gonna fold up so that this cutout is the height of your open top box. So for volume, we're gonna do length times width times height, and we should get 1,035 centimeters cubed. So now let's generalize this for any corner X. If we're gonna cut out X from the corner, that's sloppy, hang on, sorry. Okay, then I wanna know what my length will be. So we start with 28 and I'm gonna take away X and take away X. So the length should be 28 minus 2X. Then for the width, we started with 21.5. We're gonna take away x and take away x. That's 21.5 minus 2x. If we multiply those three terms together, we'll get the volume. <coughs> so turn to the next page. 
here we are with the whole dimensions in terms of x. We said the height was x. Our length was going to be 28 minus 2x. And our width was 21.5 minus 2x. In your groups, we'll pause the video here, you write the expression for volume. So that's the height times the length times the width. You don't have to mul multiply that together to standard form. But there's no point to it. Um, and now what we're going to do, it says find the maximum volume. So take out your calculators. And in Y1, type this equation. Now, if you go to your graph, the window has to be changed because you're not going to be able to see the whole function if you just look at a 10 by 10 window. So we have to think of what our x max should be and what our y max should be. So our x is, is the amount of paper we're going to cut out. So if we start with 28 inches as our longest length, the most we could cut out and have no paper remaining would be 14 inches. 14 and 14 is 28. Then we'd have no paper left. So I'm going to say that x max is 15. Just to give me a nice clear picture, I make sure I go past, a little bit past the no paper situation. Now for the y max, we want to think what's the largest possible volume. So if you think about um, the volume we got on the first page, we got 1,035. So I'm just going to take that up to 1,500, hoping that that will make a picture where I can see the, the highest volume, knowing that that 5-centimeter cutout may not give me the maximum volume. So now that you've set your window, you should get a graph that looks like this. So to find the maximum volume, I'm going to look for the maximum point. And that happens right up here. So using your calculator, go to second trace and use the maximum calculate to find out the coordinates of that point. So we'll pause the video for you to do that. And you should get 4.02 comma 1080.02 as the coordinates of the maximum. So you have to think which coordinate will give you volume. Is that the x coordinate or the y coordinate? It should be the y coordinate. So your maximum volume is 1080.02 centimeters cubed. What size square should be cut from each corner to maximize the volume is the 4.02 centimeters from the x coordinate. And because it's square, we would say 4.02 centimeters by 4.02 centimeters. Okay, your homework is page 81, 9 through 23. You may use the rest of the class time to answer those questions and work together and help each other.